Imagine a world where the sun scorches endless savannas, where towering predators roar through the night, and where survival demands not just strength, but cunning, endurance, and something entirely new, the spark of human ingenuity. Welcome to the prehistoric stage, nearly two million years ago, where a new kind of human stepped into the spotlight, Homo erectus, the upright man. These were no ordinary beings. They were the first to stare down the mightiest beasts, to conquer vast continents, and to bend the forces of nature to their will. This is their story, a saga of survival, innovation, and transformation that reshaped the world and set the stage for us. So, grab a seat by the fire and let's journey back to the dawn of humanity's rise. Picture a landscape both beautiful and brutal. Golden grasslands stretching to the horizon, punctuated by jagged cliffs and shimmering rivers. In East Africa, where our story begins, the earth is alive with danger. Saber-toothed cats stalk the plains, their fangs gleaming. Massive rhinos charge through the underbrush, while crocodiles lurk in murky waters, ready to snap at anything that dares to drink. This is the world Homo erectus entered around two million years ago, a time when survival meant outsmarting a planet that seemed determined to crush you. Homo erectus wasn't just another hominid scrabbling for scraps. Unlike their predecessors like Homo habilis or Australopithecus, these humans stood tall, literally. Their skeletons, robust yet agile, were built for a life on the move. Standing up to six feet tall, with thick bones that could withstand the blows of a hunt, they looked strikingly like us, with flat faces and prominent noses. But don't be fooled by the similarities. Their world was not ours. They faced a gauntlet of predators in a climate that swung between blistering heat and bone-chilling cold. Yet in this crucible, Homo erectus didn't just survive, they thrived, becoming the first true apex predators of our lineage. What made them so special? It wasn't just their bodies, it was their minds. Their brains, averaging 1,030 cubic centimeters, nearly 80% the size of ours, gave them a cognitive edge. They didn't just react to their world, they reshaped it. From crafting deadly tools to harnessing fire, from hunting in coordinated groups to crossing seas, Homo erectus laid the foundations for human dominance. Their story isn't just about survival, it's about rewriting the rules of existence. Let's start with what defined them, standing upright. While earlier hominids like Homo habilis were bipedal, Homo erectus perfected it. Their legs, long and muscular, were built for running. Their spines, aligned for balance, let them stride across vast distances. Fossils from sites like Kubifora in Kenya show footprints, trackways etched in ancient mud that tell of relentless pursuits. These weren't sprints, but marathons, a hunting strategy we now call persistence hunting. Imagine a herd of antelope grazing under the African sun. A group of Homo erectus appears, not charging but jogging, their sweat glands, a unique human trait, keeping them cool while their prey overheats. Hours pass, the antelope exhausted stumbles. A well-aimed spear, crafted from sharpened stone, delivers the final blow. This wasn't just hunting, it was a masterclass in endurance, strategy, and patience. My analysis? This ability to outlast prey gave Homo erectus a caloric surplus, fueling their larger brains and setting them apart from every other creature. But their bodies were only part of the story. Their intelligence was the real game changer. The Achelian tool industry, named after a site in France, marked a technological leap. Hand axes, cleavers, and scrapers meticulously shaped from flint or obsidian were their weapons of choice. These tools weren't just crude rocks, they were symmetrical, sharp, and versatile, used to butcher megafauna like elephants or rhinos. At sites like Olergasilia in Kenya, archaeologists have found piles of these tools alongside animal bones, evidence of systematic hunting and processing. This wasn't random scavenging, it was industrial-scale predation. Before Homo erectus, humans were prey as often as predators. Leopards and hyenas saw our ancestors as easy targets, but Homo erectus flipped the script. 
Fossils from Dimanisi in Georgia and Nariokotome in Kenya reveal bones of rhinos, hippos, and even crocodiles bearing cut marks from stone tools. These weren't just kills, they were feasts. Homo erectus didn't just hunt, they dominated. How did they do it? Group hunting was key. Trackways in Kenya, like those at Ilaret, show footprints of multiple individuals. Some suggest all male hunting parties moving together. This coordination required communication, planning, and trust. I'd argue this hints at a proto-language, not full speech, but gestures, grunts, or simple vocalizations that conveyed strategy. Their shoulder structure, similar to ours, allowed them to throw spears with deadly accuracy. Imagine a crocodile, once a terror, now skewered from a safe distance by a hurled projectile. For predators, these upright apes were a nightmare, a species that could outrun, outsmart, and outfight them. This predatory prowess had ripple effects. Large kills meant surplus food, which led to sharing. At sites like Swart Crans in South Africa, fossils of Homo erectus with injuries, like an elderly individual with gum disease or a boy with scoliosis, suggest they survived because others cared for them. This wasn't just survival, it was community. My take? This food-sharing culture was the seed of human sociality, a trait that still defines us. Now, let's talk about fire. Around 1.5 million years ago, Homo erectus began exploiting natural fires, tending embers from lightning strikes. By 400,000 years ago, at sites like Gesher Benat Yaakov in Israel, hearth showed they could create fire. This was revolutionary. Fire meant warmth in icy European winters, protection from predators, and cooked food that was easier to digest, unlocking more nutrients. Roasted meat and tubers fueled their energy-intensive brains and bodies. But fire was more than practical. It was social. Picture a group huddled around a flickering flame sharing stories or planning hunts. Anthropologists suggest these gatherings may have sparked early language. While early finds like the Turkana boys suggested limited vocal ability due to respiratory issues, later fossils show developed speech-related brain areas and hyoid bones. I believe firelit nights fostered communication, whether through words or gestures, knitting communities tighter. Fire also enabled migration. In colder regions like Zhou Kodian in China, hearts allowed Homo erectus to survive harsh winters. They built shelters, huts of earth, rock and branches around these fires, as seen in a 700,000-year-old site in Germany. These weren't just camps, they were homes, bases for exploring new lands. Perhaps their most astonishing feat was seafaring. Homo erectus reached islands like Flores and Roti, separated from the mainland by deep waters with no land bridges. At Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia, tools and engraved shells dated to one million years ago suggest thriving communities. Building rafts capable of such journeys required planning, teamwork, and foresight, skills that rival modern humans. How did they do it? Likely they lashed logs together using vines or animal hides. These weren't random drifts. The presence of tools and settlements indicates deliberate voyages. My analysis, this seafaring ability reflects a cognitive leap, a capacity for abstract thinking and long-term planning. It also shows their adaptability, allowing them to colonize diverse environments from African savannas to Asian jungles. Homo erectus wasn't a monolith. Over their 1.9 million year reign, they diversified into over 27 subspecies, from Dimanisi in Georgia to Trinil in Java. Fossils show variations in skull shape and body size, reflecting adaptations to local climates. In Africa, they hunted in open savannas. In Asia, they navigated dense forests. In Europe, they endured cold woodlands. This adaptability explains their longevity outlasting all other human species. But where did they come from? The debate rages on. Most evidence points to an African origin, evolving from Homo habilis or a late Australopithecus around two million years ago. Fossils in Kubifora and Olduvai Gorge support this. Yet a 2011 study suggested an Asian origin, citing similar aged fossils in both continents. I lean toward Africa, 
given the older hominid record there, but the simultaneous appearance in Asia raises questions. Perhaps, Africa's... For nearly two million years, Homo erectus ruled. Then, around 108,000 years ago, they vanished. Why? Climate change is the likely culprit. Woodlands, their preferred habitat, gave way to dense rainforests in places like Java, where the last known Homo erectus lived. Their prey, elephants, rhinos, giant turtles, disappeared as ecosystems shifted. Fossils from Gandong show a dwindling population, clinging to a shrinking refuge. This wasn't just environmental. Their reliance on large game made them vulnerable. When megafauna vanished, so did their food surplus. Unlike later humans, they lacked the flexibility to pivot to smaller prey or plants. My perspective, their specialized lifestyle, while a strength, became a liability in a changing world. To make this real, let's imagine a few scenes inspired by their lives. Picture a young Homo erectus in Kenya, part of a hunting party. He's not the leader, just one of many, his heart pounding as they track a wounded rhino. The group moves silently, communicating with glances and gestures. After hours of pursuit, the rhino collapses, and they share the kill, laughter echoing under the stars. This boy, scarred from a fall, survives because his kin feed him, a testament to their care. Or consider a woman on Flores, weaving vines into a raft. Her group has planned this journey for months, driven by tales of a distant island. As they paddle across choppy waters, she feels the weight of their future. A new home, a new chance. They reach the shore, leaving tools and shells that will puzzle us millennia later. These aren't just stories, they're echoes of real lives, pieced together from fossils and artifacts. They show Homo erectus, not as distant fossils, but as people, striving, loving, surviving. What can we learn from Homo erectus? Their story is one of resilience and innovation, but also of limits. They mastered their world through tools, fire, and community, pushing humanity's boundaries further than ever before. Yet their downfall reminds us that no species is invincible. Climate change, a force they couldn't control, ended their reign. Today, as we face our own environmental challenges, their lesson is clear. Adaptability is survival. We must innovate, collaborate, and respect the planet's limits, just as they did, until they couldn't. So, the next time you light a fire or work with others, remember Homo erectus. They weren't just our ancestors. They were pioneers who showed us what it means to be human. Let's honor their legacy by building a future that endures.